Hey, 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 welcome. Welcome, welcome, my Piscean Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus signs. Welcome to your romantic soulmate read for June, July 2020. Our timeless, we made it. I made it all the way to the end of this series. It was a really, really good series, this soulmate read. Really enjoyed it this time around. But in case you're new, I am your reader, Mark Angela Lyons, Mel for short, professional witch, professional intuitive. President of Drawing the Circle Productions and Pisces Moon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got that lovely break in between my Venus, my Venus and Libra until I get to the Pisces Moon. I get to just enjoy the signs without having anything to do with any of them. But here we are again, saving the best for last, it seems, just when we thought our chance had passed, right? So... If uh, you are new to my channel, again, please welcome. Do uh, consider uh, liking the video, uh, subscribing to the channel, hitting the notification bell, and commenting, because all that stuff helps people find me. And, uh, you know, if this serves you, maybe it'll serve somebody else out there in the interwebs of it all. Um, this is a general read. Please take what resonates, leave what does not. Trying to keep the reads since everybody's been on lockdown a little bit shorter because upload times have been ridiculous. It's only a 15 card spread. Takes about 40 minutes, give or take, depending on how chatty the guides are in the particular soulmate contract. Um, so uh, again, uh, use your intuition. You're, <laughs> obviously, you're a water sign. Take what resonates, leave what doesn't. Check your other signs that out of the way. This is a romantic soulmate contract read. Not all soulmate contracts are romantic. My mom and I are soulmate contracts. Uh, different than Twin Flames. My father and I were Twin Flame contract. <laughs> and there are some links in the description box below explaining the difference between the two, both by me and by a brilliant spiritual teacher by the name of Matt Kahn. Hey, house author, YouTuber. I, I don't think he calls himself, considers himself a YouTuber. I don't know if he's monetized, who cares. Uh, but Matt Kahn, all for love, which is where I found um, the video that you'll see of his in the description box uh, below. Soul Contracts, Twin Flames, and Soulmates Redefined. Genius. I mean, really, I've been doing, studying this stuff practically my whole life, and he's just a genius at it. He's very good at it. So that being said, the foundation of a soulmate contract is you help each other heal. Period. Anything on top of that is all clauses and, and loopholes and all that other stuff. The foundation of soulmate is you help each other heal. So, whether you've met each other or not, we're going to look at the contract with your romantic, your happy, healthy, wealthy, wise, intimate, romantic, sexual, satisfying soulmate contract. Because those are the ones that we've been working on for lifetimes. Yes, your friends, your family, even your co-workers and your bosses, you might have... Um, uh, some soulmate contracts and twin flames scattered all around in there, but the, in, in terms of the one that pretty much everyone's coming to YouTube for, and most of my clients want to know about, it's usually not about their mom, uh, it's about the romantic part of it. Cool, cool. So we're going to look at this like a contract. Uh, we will be looking at you instead of Divine Masculine, Divine Feminine, which certainly I have done before and may do again. It's just going to be you, Pisces, as uh, party number one and your soulmate contract partner, party number two. So there'll be none of that guessing who is who with the Caroline Mace archetype cards that I always use for such things. We're going to start with two of those. One for you, one for your soulmate. Uh, unless you're the cross watcher, then you, know, you figure out who you are in that. Obviously, you would be the second position, uh, and then we're going to layer a Celtic cross spread on top of it, which is my favorite, favorite spread, and certainly incredibly classic to get you an eagle's eye view of anything, let alone a soulmate or a twin flame or any kind of relationship contract. Cool, cool. I think that's about it. That's the prologue. Take a few deep breaths. Stay in the present moment. Take what resonates. Leave what doesn't. I'll get you the best clarity, guidance, and grace that I can get. Us. Remember, Pisces Moon here. I can't stop the information from coming through about me anymore. I did try, but here I am a year later on YouTube doing readings and still. Let's watch what happens. Ready? Take a nice deep breath. Oh, come right into the present moment with me. Uh, the prayer before this was really lovely. I even did a little breath work, had another cup of coffee. It's sitting right next to me there. So I'm really, really going to give you the best I got here. Ready? My collective pantheons of angels, goddesses, gods, masters, and the higher selves of all involved. Please, I need two cards. 
uh, one for the Piscean Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus sign, the other for the soul mate of that Piscean in this Pisces Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus sign, happy, healthy, wealthy, wise, intimate, sexual, satisfying, romantic <laughs> contract for June, July 20. 20 or timeless please i know it's getting a little humid in here and the cards are getting a little sticky because i can't have the air conditioning on and the camera at the same time because you won't be able to hear me over the ac i'm happy to have good air good central air um but please can you make sure you please put the right cards in my hand for this particular reading in terms of number one who is the piscean collective sun moon rising venus sign in this soulmate contract what is their dominant soul power archetype being alchemized from lead to gold shadow to light as they help each other heal and who is the soulmate partner contract partner to this piscean collective sun moon rising venus on june july 2020 keep in mind these can be triggery i don't even know what they are yet i didn't look <laughs> these cards have shadow and light attributes you'll see what i mean as i go we always start with the shadow sort of get the bitterness out of the way so we can look at how to alchemize it into the sweet third what is this? The third time? There's one. The gossip? There's two. Yeah, the gossip has made a couple of appearances. Three! Three times in these rounds. Do you see how many cards there are in these archetype decks? And yet, there has been such a repetition. Uh, but the exorcist is new to the party. That's kind of interesting. So, my Pisceans, you got the gossip archetype, which in its light is beautiful. We'll get there. The shadow attribute, I think you know, thrives on the power of passing on private or secret information. Yeah, literally, the Aquarian had the gossip. Uh, Leo had the gossip. The Cancerians had the gossip. I have it written in front of me because that's I put those in the title. Betraying confidence is sucks, but this is a soulmate contract. You're going to learn how to heal that. Uh, the light attribute awakens consideration for the feelings of others and honoring trust right and that's what you've been shooting for in a relationship so m maybe you've got some wounds and some scar tissue there if you yourself are not a gossip but i will tell you something whether an archetype is with you a reason a season or a lifetime when the gossip archetype shows up in your life however it does you have the possibility the opportunity to heal that into such a sacred vessel of the grace of counsel where people will tell you their truth and spill their guts to you even if they don't know you gossips when they heal that it's like people can't resist spitting out the truth in front of them it's sort of like a superpower which is what archetypes are sort of all about spiritual power uh soul power but you're dealing with the exorcist which is very close to the shaman archetype this is the creative family of archetype this is definitely the divine family of archetype shadow attribute fear of facing your own demons so you're dealing with somebody if you are the pisces watching this someone who if they haven't really done the shadow work possessed possessed by their pain possessed by the aspects of the inner child that have gone ne too long neglected abused or codependent upon right wounds of loss just building up in the background like a warehouse at costco right so you can kind of feel so many people walking around with that but this person has a fear of facing their own demons their addictions all just it's it goes with the archetype but catch the light attribute as dark as an archetype is in the shadow is as brilliant as it is in its light freeing yourself and others of destructive impulses this could be somebody who's finally ready for a soulmate contract to deal with the romantic wounds and the sexual wounds and the intimacy wounds from this life and every other whether you, you know each other or not very heavy duty because they're i think they're going to confess to you if you've really got this gossip stuff under control i used to gossip who didn't i mean growing up celebrity gossip i'll still watch on tv uh, and on social media and stuff but i think if you're a celebrity it comes with the job it's part of the contract so to speak but uh, once I cut that out of my life, right, and, and, and took my vows of confidentiality, which is what my intuitive skills are based on. They're not just based on repetition. Yes, I've been doing this since I'm 12. I'll be 52 this year. But when you really make a vow of confidentiality to the divine, however you say that, very throat chakra, surrendering your will to the divine, Carolyn Mace, Anatomy of the Spirit, uh, that's when they really started unlocking my other intuitive superpowers, if you want to go there. Yeah, which, you know, empathy. Can we tone that one down a little bit during global crisis? Apparently not. 
So really, really cool. Let's build on top of this with 10 Daughters of the Moon tarot cards. This is so fun. Okay, my kind of fun. Yeah, gossip and an exorcist. Ooh, ain't we got fun. Breathe. <sighs> <laughs> oh my goddesses, I felt that. See, I, I have two goddesses. That's it. That's Cher, the throne of uh, Pisces. Diana, goddess of the moon, like Princess Diana of, of Themyscira or England, however you choose to see that. Themyscira. Uh, and Circe, <laughs> turning men to pigs since the Bronze Age, and it's not so much getting them to pigs, it's the return journey. Thank you, Cersei, probably my ancestor. I'm cleaning up my ancestral patterning, turning pigs back into men. <laughs> with me, Pisces. Let's do this. <laughs> my goddesses, please. Ten cards, Celtic cross for this uh, Piscean gossip archetype in their Piscean collective sun, moon, rising, Venus sign, happy, healthy, wealthy, wise, intimate, romantic, sexual, satisfying, soulmate contract for June, July, 2020 with this exorcist archetype. Please, what is the card that covers this gossip? What is the card that represents this exorcist who crosses their path? What is at the core? These are just popping out of the deck. What is at the core of this contract? What is behind them in this contract? What is crowning this coming into being this contract? What is before them ahead on the path? What is the lesson popping out like muffins here from the outside looking in? How does the world see it? What is the destiny? Where are they on the hero's journey? of this contract and considering the timeline of this lifetime, the quantum thread I am tuned into here, what is the most probable outcome for this Piscean Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus sign, happy, healthy, wealthy, wise, intimate, romantic, sexual, soulmate contract, and this light is blinding me. There we go. Okay. It just takes a little wavy, wavy, and it goes away. Right? My Pisceans, we are the gossip. And like I said, I've alchemized this pretty much. Because please, awakens consideration for the feelings of others. Duh, I'm an empath and honoring trust. Oh, jeez, the vows of confidentiality. But get that in this contract, we are the learner. The eight of pentacles on top of that. So though we may be learning to curb our gossip and watch what we say in throat chakra issues in general, because Pisceans can be very secretive, but when they reverse the polarity on that flash flood, right, of emotions and expression coming through, but there are lessons being learned here. So remember, this applies whether or not you know each other or not, whether you've met each other or not. I've seen that in every reading, a spectrum of people who have never even met, to people who have just met online, to people who have met in person once, to people who are sequestering together, others who are not, you know, like this whole, and it, it, it's all thematic. All of this symbolism is in all of them. So if you get, oh, I'm in the learning curve. I'm learning something now, but learning through practical application. It's a crone teaching a maiden how to weave a blanket. And here in the background is the blanket and or a prototype, an example of... Uh, so get that this is through hands-on earth element pentacle card uh, learning lesson application. And this exorcist has the Libra card. And I'm going to tell you what I just heard. More clairaudient would make sense, I guess, with Libra. They like you. <laughs> it might be a little... A, a little, I, I, I hesitate to say, use the word infatuated, but there's definitely something poetic and verbal and lyrical that I'm getting off of this Libra card for this exorcist, right? Now, remember, they have a fear of facing their own demons. So to see the Libra card, that might very well be that they are coming into a psychological balance as a result of perhaps some communication with you, right? Some kind of at least energetic interaction and that their hearts are open. Now, here's what I will tell you about when your heart chakra cracks open. Well, if it doesn't crack open, the universe does everything it can to crack it open. Not pretty, right? Better just try and be a loving person. Still, there's no guarantees, right? Um, but that, as that light shines, it doesn't just necessarily like chase all the demons away. The demons are actually integrated and healed. It's called embracing the shadow, right? All those ego patterns begin to unwind. That's what our demons kind of sort of are psychologically. And by the way, what is a demon but an angel that has fallen and forgotten their wings? 
right? What's at the core of this puppy? Oh, ace of Cups. This is the third reading. I think we're Ace of Cups has shown up in the third position and you see I'm not dealing them off the top of the deck. I'm totally pulling them at random with prayer, right? So at the core of this, this is an internal opportunity for love, which I'm gonna go with what I've seen in those other readings. I see the pattern here, connecting dots, thank you. Uh, that you probably haven't met yet. You're probably not expressing these feelings yet. They're, they're probably still uh, under your waist, as it were, not so ready to come up and out. So that would make sense with uh, you, my Piscean, with this gossip, right, about learning perhaps to hold your tongue. Perhaps to hold your tongue and watch things unfold because there you are feeling, you're both feeling, the point of a Celtic cross spread in terms of relationships shows you both people, but every individually, but then every other card is about the two of you, the relationship itself, almost like a third entity. Well, the Ace of Cups is that there is a real ha happy seed. Uh, the card says happiness on it at the bottom. Two can be very happy together, the potential for that. It's like even if you know each other and you've danced before and you've been separated and, you know, sometimes soulmates go through that. It can look very much like a twin flame for a while uh, and, until the, the nature of the contract reveals itself. There are even twin flames that turn into soulmates, but that's a whole other category for me right now. I've never seen one uh, that I know of. So uh, trust this one of cups, but it's not something maybe that you have to, if you are going to talk about it, do it under... Um, uh, situations based in confidence. So I ask the other person, I will have this conversation with you, but do you swear to me on the gods that made you? This is what I do when I have a conversation. I... Do you swear on the gods that made you that you will keep this conversation in total confidentiality? Now that's only when I'm talking about personal stuff. When I do a reading, I'm automatically under those vows. So that's just how that works. Where are you all coming from? the dreamer. The fool. The fool. Now, just that it's the dreamer that indicates in the past that you dreamed this. Now, maybe not. Maybe some of you, because your Pisceans literally dreamed this in the subconscious sleeping state. Uh, unconscious sleeping state, I should say. But I think because it's the major... Think. I can feel it. The major arcana card. There is a leap of faith. You, both of you, took a leap of faith, even if you haven't met yet. There's some leap of faith that you took following inspiration to even like watch a video like this, considering, I mean, who hasn't endured the pain and suffering of outrageous fortune? Oh, sorry, I just Shakespeared. Uh, uh, in terms of romantic uh, sexual uh, romance, you know, relationships. And But this is soulmate contract. You're here to help each other heal. And I feel like this exorcist can help free yourself of destructive impulses, like, that's it, I'm never gonna love again, that kind of sort of stuff. Or binging. Pisces, it's not like we don't know how to do it, we're sort of built for it. <laughs> Feeling the pain of all of life, right? Some distraction. Uh, oh, speaking of, there we go, the devil card, and what's crowning, so your fears are gonna be coming up, so what is this bringing up for you, uh, for both of you, but is perhaps the demon, the fear, the, the, not just the insecurity, but the oppression of psychic weight, unfinished business from the past, the chains that bind, patterns of abuse, neglect, codependence, and loss, just like chains. Here, we have a woman, I say this every time because you can't really see it in the card, it's a woman buried under all those stones here, and each of the stones has a face on it which says this is a person from her past, right? This is somebody, this is like the excess weight that we carry uh, from contract to contract, relationship to relationship, except our soulmates help us pull those rocks off of ourselves and we help them pull the rocks off of them and then use those rocks as the foundation for healthy relationships. Oh, good God almighty. Let's keep going. Where are, you, where are we headed? I'm in now. I am totally in on this reading. There it is, Eight of Cups, another one that has made its position, its, uh, its presence shown in so many positions in this. It is the walking into rather than the walking away uh, in this deck. Yes, the card is called Withdrawal, but this is a woman who took a boat to an island to follow the intuitive hints of these cups into a cave, to go deeper into herself. And what is she going to find down there is probably to really find that happiness within herself. I feel like that's happening for both of you. So the two of you might... Okay, the two of you are oppressed. For some of you, half of you are with somebody else. 
<laughs> there for a good chunk of you. You know what I'm saying? It's like, uh, I don't know which one it is. Could be the Gossip or the Exorcist, I guess. Yeah, the Exorcist. <laughs> Beware pea soup. Don't have company over with the kid upstairs. Uh, <laughs> tire bed frames down to the floor. Uh, one of you might already be in sort of a dead-end relationship, a contract whose expiration date has expired, right? So you just have to go in right now, particularly with the state of the world and how... Countries and cities and states are slowly opening. There's still this continued trend of going within. Hopefully the gossip, sort of flying across the room, will be able to uh, to really honor the trusts in their lives to perhaps, ex perhaps express what they need to, but that this exorcist can free themselves and others from the destructive impulses that are so obvious and easy to get a hold of in times of... Uh, tumult and crisis and transformation on planet Earth. A very, very Piscean cross. Let's look at the staff. The lesson. She's shown up again and again and again. The hermit, the wise one. Your lessons are learned alone right now, but this is voluntary. You're not being punished. You're not being held apart from each other because in a past life, somebody burped during dinner. <laughs> and therefore, you didn't say, excuse me, and therefore, you're not being, you know, no, none of that. This is all about your own individual healing. You need to face your demons. Both of you need to face your demons. And I'm going to think the exorcist may be more than the gossip, but the gossip has to be very, very careful about what they're saying, that their conduct be in alignment with their highest, their soul's high wisdom in reality. That's a phrase I took from Matt Kahn, but as a witch personally, um, I'm not Wiccan, by the way. I don't do the Wiccan read out of obligation or religion. I adopt the Wiccan read because in Yeharm none do what you will make sense with the unity consciousness and the quantum field. We're all one, just saying, right? So to go in and rise above it, right? To really learn your lesson, not too much to being alone, but by taking time, space, rest, and breath for yourself to really give yourself the love that you need. Because as you are healing yourself individually through quantum entanglement of a soulmate contract, you're already automatically helping your soulmate contract partner heal. That's how it works. It, it, that's why you never have to meet in order to fulfill the contract. You just need to heal. And in that, you help each other heal. And I've said this in other readings. That's why when you finally do meet, you start comparing you know, stories and you're like, wow, you went through that? Wow, I went through that at the exact same time. Duh, quantum entanglement. From the outside looking in, how the world sees this is, ooh, what a luscious, juicy egg corn that is. I wonder what kind of oak tree it will yield, right? New opportunity. You've got two aces, brand new, even if you've danced before, even if you know each other. You are getting a brand new opportunity. Oh, and we've got the fool. We've got the ace of cups and we've got the ace of pentacles here. Yeah, so either if you have not met, you're going to, if you've, uh, at least you're feeling the potential, if you have met for something bigger, deeper, greater, but the world sees it too. A lot of potential there. That feels lovely. Sex is probably really good too. Uh, what is your destiny? Your destiny, the courage, the card of strength, which is really... <laughs> what helps you break the chains and remove the stones of oppression. Courage. Courage. No cowardice here. Or if there is, what are you so afraid of? Are you afraid of what other people will think? Are you afraid of what other people will say? Are you afraid of hurting somebody but following your dream? That's called codependence, sweetheart. And that's a demon. <laughs> that's a demon. Feist your demon, right? Oh my goodness gracious. This is like puzzle pieces clicking into place. What is your outcome, at least for now? Loyalty, three of, three of flames. If you haven't come together, you will be communicating. There's great desire between the two of you. But you're probably going to wait for each other. You're probably going to give it some time. You may dance here and dance there. Lord knows we're in a much more sexually liberated society than we were, kind of, sort of, than we used to be. Um, <laughs> being gay pride and all, I am wearing my Abfab t-shirt. In honor of it, sweetie darling. Um, 
but there there is that sense of that candle in the window of that there really is like like even if you have a dance with somebody else you'll, it'll, be, it'll be like yeah but this isn't a soulmate thing i'm not feeling it that way but we could play we could dance i'm gonna get into the groove baby you've got to prove your love to me every time i do a song lyric i promised i would take a sip of water on camera it's the only way i stay hydrated brilliant brilliant tricky but brilliant like I can see the alchemical workings here so those are only 12 cards we have three more to go one of which healing with the angels oracle Doreen Virtue who is the healing angel <laughs> healing with the angels oracle who is the angel that's offering their healing to both of you whether you are the gossip or the cross watcher exorcist Oh, that's a fun way to say it for you to tell me on the last reading. <laughs> yes, I did this for another. I get it. My angels and archangels, please, who is the angel of healing assigned to this Piscean collective sun, moon, rising, Venus sign? Happy, healthy, wealthy, wise. Did one drop? No, one did not. Please, who is the healing angel assigned to this Piscean? There you are. Collective sun, moon, rising, Venus sign. Happy, healthy, wealthy, wise. Uh, satisfying sexual romantic soulmate contract, June, July 2020. I know, it's a lot of dolphin energy here. Dolphin and shark. Angel of retreat. Tactical retreat. It's time to really pull back into your own energy field if you have not been doing that all along. Now, look, there is a retreat out of fear, which is what the demon might do, right? Which is what these fears, these oppressions might be about. So that's the difference between running away and being the hermit. Uh, the hermit, when it's done out of fear, is the runaway child. It's the child that's afraid, doesn't feel safe, doesn't feel emotionally equipped, so runs away. It's the coward. The opposite of, of the card of courage, of strength, right? So then it's really about I'm going to retreat and heal, understanding that a soul contract is part of the divine plan written into the lives before we even step into them, I hope you realize. In other words, you, we are chosen to play the lives that we play. We eventually have to choose, once we're here, whether or not we stay or go in a lifetime, uh, but we are immortal beings, like actors cast to play certain parts. So the contracts themselves are sort of like the relationships written into the script of the divine plan. No, they're not like that. They are that. So, uh, so, so get that. You're going to work it out. This is going to work out. You're going to be together in some way, shape, or form. But right now, the way that you come together the fastest is by healing yourselves individually, which sucks. I get it. Uh, but since, you know, we're not supposed to be within six feet of people we don't know or haven't been around, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay to pull back a little bit. Perfect timing for at least June, July 2020. We'll see what June, July 2021 says when we get there. Hopefully things will shift before then. And maybe to get a little help with that, let's ask the higher selves of all involved a uh, Whisper of Love Oracle card. Breathe. Oh, right. Higher selves of all involved, my own included, possibly. Which means the higher selves of you, my Piscean gossip, and whoever this exorcist is, please, the higher selves of all involved, one card in clarity. What is the whisper of love for the Piscean collective sun, moon, rising, Venus sign, happy, healthy, wealthy, wise, intimate, romantic, sexual, soulmate contract for June, July, 2020, or timeless? What you got? For us fishies, for us mer people. Rest and relaxation is essential. We all have a fundamental need to take rest, and rest is part of self love and self care. And it's allowing the universe to take over, right? To just say, all right, I am going to do this work. I am going to face what oppresses me personally, understanding that it's going to have some kind of healing effect on this soulmate partner. Maybe I know who this is or, or not. But through this time of withdrawal, I am going to rest. I am going to allow whatever rises to rise. And you know what I'm going to do? 
whatever, Rises, I'm going to love that. <laughs> it's a really good book. His books are really good. So rest and relaxation are uh, is essential. Is essential uh, there for the two of you. I mean, it's very, very clearly laid out here. And even if you are together, rest and relax together. Pull back together or give yourself the time that you need. Uh, and, and the thing is, it's not that soulmate contracts never have bumps in the road or arguments. Of course there are disagreements. Just intuitively, you're going to feel different ways about different things, right? Uh, depending on your nervous system, uh, which is highly individualized. Uh, but it always works itself out. Those wrinkles always iron themselves out. You always, because the, the, it's a, you're helping each other heal. There's always this unspoken, perhaps unrealized, greater understanding of a larger context, right? So lovely. You're, you're gonna. I mean, there's nothing that traumatic going on here. Aside, I would say, from this card of oppression, everything else here is wonderful and really pointing towards a means of healing. So let's get you. A Healing Mantra card from the Healing Mantra deck by Matt Kahn. I love this deck. Whoever is watching this, whether you are the Piscean Gossip or the Exorcist Crosswatcher, there is a good name for a band, the Exorcist Crosswatchers. Uh, uh, that is a good name for a band, actually. Only people on YouTube would get it, but that's okay. Only on people who YouTube who won't get readings uh, would get it. But we're going to ask uh, the Ascended Masters of Soulmate Contracts for whoever is watching this, the perfect healing mantra that as they do it for themselves through the quantum entanglement of a soulmate contract, you help your soulmate partner heal as well. Cool, cool. Let's do this. Breathe. Because <sighs> my Ascended Master is high. This is what we call the last card down, as you know. Please, one card in clarity. The perfect healing mantra for this Piscean collective. I hear you, sun, moon, rising, <laughs> Venus signs. Happy, healthy, wealthy, wise. Sexual, intimate, romantic, satisfying soulmate contract for June, July 2020 for this gossip. Piscean gossip and this soulmate partner exorcist. What is their perfect healing now, what is their perfect healing mantra? Please put that card right in my hand. Transforming tragedy. Loss is my reminder that more room uh, has been made for greater gifts to be received. Guys, you're clearing stuff out. Transforming tragedy. I get it. Then this full card really is saying that you have already jumped into your new life but there still might be some pain, some tragedy, some trauma uh, that needs to be what? Transformed. So the mantra, loss is my reminder that more room has been made for greater gifts to be received. And I feel like the gift that you're receiving is this soulmate contract that you guys are going to get to be together. But you are processing of all the wounds. The four ego wounds are abuse, neglect, codependence, and loss. Regardless of abuse, neglect, or codependence, it feels like the heavy one here is loss. In other words, there could be elements of those other wounds in there. But that's why you're still, what, resting and licking your wounds. Yes, you might like someone else to lick them for you every now and again. <laughs> Sorry. Just, it's Gay Pride Month and I haven't touched another person in months. Uh, <laughs> that's not true. I've hugged some people with masks on. Uh, transforming tragedy. Let me read you this from the book. I mean, it's also part of the path of true love. Path of true love. The course of true love never did run smooth. Uh, transforming tragedy. Loss is my reminder that more room has been made for greater gifts to be received. When tragedy is transformed, you see that endings foreshadow the inevitable arrival of exciting new beginnings. I just caught a whiff of that. I let go of a lot of people and let go of a big twin flame last year. Let's keep moving on. It may not feel good to lose the things that once defined you. Duh. Like, I don't know, normal life 
four months ago, five months ago, but it is life's way of expanding your identity to invite more passion, joy, and synchronicity into your reality. I'm so down for that. As you transform tragedy, any degree of loss merely sets the stage for the arrival of greater gains. This mantra is ideal for overcoming personal struggles, mourning the death of a loved one, M-O-U-R-N-I-N-G, the death of a loved one, and releasing regret. Well, I get it. I mean, how many cards of withdrawal do you have here? You literally have the card of withdrawal. You have the card of the wise one, the hermit. You've got rest and relaxation. And of course, that's all pointing to this crowning. It feels like whatever is oppressing both of you is going to come up either literally in your outside world or within you uh, both individually. Again, it depends on whether you've, you're with each other or not. With that retreat card, the angel of retreat, let's pick up, uh, pop up the larger picture and we'll see. Nice deep breath. We've got you, my gossip, as the shadow attribute of the gossip here for my Piscean thrives on the power of passing on private or secret information. Everybody's done it. Uh, betraying confidence as everybody's done it. It's how we learn if we have that archetype to heal into the light attribute awakens consideration for the feelings of others, particularly as Pisceans, that empathic part of it. You can feel other people's stuff usually, but do you have consideration for their feelings? And can uh, there be an honoring of trust there where if you say that you are not going to tell anybody something, that you're going to keep something confidential, that you keep uh, that honored, right? You keep that in the honor zone. Uh, and you are, of course, here crossed by the learner, right? So this is a, a hands-on application, this one. I really do get the feeling that you two know each other and have talked to each other and have uh, danced with each other even before. And I'm putting dance in air quotes you can't see because there's a picture up right now. Uh, but you are learning. You are taking this, uh, if you like, thread by thread instead of step by step as this weaver is learning how to weave. Your soulmate partner, the exorcist in their shadow, has a fear of facing their own demons. And really, I can feel some of those demons, for a good chunk of you, go back to childhood. There's a lot of boundary violation. Let's just put, oh, that's what abuse is. It's violation of boundaries and there's some neglect in there, you know? So it's like, that's what they're afraid of facing. So if they can, they're in that process of alchemizing themselves from freeing themselves and others of the destructive impulses as a, a result of that, those demons tearing them apart. They are in a process of bringing that what? Into balance with that Libra card and considering this is a soulmate read it's probably their love of you that's sort of the light fueling this on the love something's been awakened within them that is seeking a healing path though it may be a completely different healing path from your own what's going on here in the subconscious in the core that ace of cups happiness there's a true seat I mean I could I would even go so far as to say with that card of the exorcist there that this might be a true love situation not every soulmate contract is true love in the how we usually think of it let's leave that there but the seat and you've got the ace as well in your eighth position here in the fool and the next card we're going to look at behind you this is a major arcana thing in play this 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 is a significant relationship and with the dreamer in your past the card of the fool you might have been feeling this you might have been dreaming for this to happen. You might have even had <laughs> the coincidence of the very thing that you've ever wanting uh, always wanted showing up in form. Uh, and then being freaked out by it, right? And isn't that the next card there? Oppression, right? What's crowning now is really whatever is holding this contract back for the both of you. Whatever is repressing it is going to be addressed. Now, it may be addressed individually, right? So you might not be expressing all of that to each other. Because remember, you've got the gossip archetype. So though there may be communication between the two of you, there may be that really honoring of trust there, Um can you keep those confidences? Otherwise, it's probably better that you keep your confidences to yourselves uh, right now with that card of repression. Why? Because we've got the Eight of Cups withdrawal. This is something 
Honestly, there's some wounds going on here for this exorcist. I'm just not feeling it as deep for the gossip here because of that oppression card, but there might really be a need for some counseling and therapy here. Um, I mean, unless you're sort of, like, I'm a spiritual counselor, but I don't want to be somebody's counselor in a soulmate contract. I, well, unless that's the contract. I mean, in terms of a romantic sexual thing, I don't sleep with my clients. Well, they're mostly women. That makes it easier. Um, you know what I mean? But they're, they're, they might actually even be in some kind of therapeutic process themselves. Uh, again, healing themselves. And again, that's mirrored in the lesson here, the, the hermit, that you're learning how to heal yourselves in ways that no one else can heal you, right? You're learning to love what only you can love, right? Giving yourself the love that only you can give you. But that feels like it is equal. It is balanced, particularly with that Libra card uh, representing the exorcist, that they're coming into balance. And there's something psychotherapeutic going on here, whether it's psychology or counseling or shadow work or something. If not, that uh, wise one, the, the hermit card in the lesson position is saying individually that's where uh, this works. Again, if you are sequestered together, if you're, you really want to like cut everybody off from the world and just work the two of you together to heal this, that's understandable and another way of interpreting these cards as well. The world, however, sees this relationship as a nugget, right? As a golden nugget perhaps raw, right? Ace of Pentacles, uh, a healthy, full uh, egg corn that holds within it the potential of a gigantic oak tree, you know, shedding billions of egg corns throughout its life cycle. A lot of potential here, a solid foundation, something very lucky and balanced, but it's going to take a huge amount of strength then. You've got the, your destiny. This is a hero's journey contract. This is going to take the exorcist and the gossip to really rise above their stuff, to really do the work. Take the hero's journey with no guarantee of success, because otherwise it's not really a hero's journey if everything's guaranteed. Although I will say with that three of flames in your outcome position that it doesn't matter how long this one takes. The two of you will wait for each other. And like I said, you may have dances, you may have dalliances, you may have some flirtations. But Pisces, you know when it's a soul thing by how it feels, or maybe you don't, and maybe that's the learner part of this for you, right? Just be careful who you're talking to with this stuff. Make sure that you know who you're talking to and what you are saying, that you are not betraying confidences as you go. Um, because even again, what is the angel, the angel card here, the healing with the angels, the angel of retreat, pull back, not run away, pull back, run away, retreat, rejuvenate. Uh, we've got all these planets retrograde, right? It's Mercury retrograde. No one should be communicating right now anyway, except really going in and communicating with the soul, allowing the ego to unwind, right? Allowing things to dissolve as you rethink, refeel, and reevaluate. And, um, what do your higher selves say? Rest and relaxation is essential. We all have a fundamental need to take breaks. That would say to me that the two of you are on a break if you have danced before. Dance break! Uh, and what is the healing mantra, whether you are the, the gossip or the exorcist here? It's the mantra of transforming tragedy. Loss is my reminder that more room has been made for greater gifts to be received. Now, a little wordy, but true. Not just true, truth. And the more that becomes habituated and, oh, they're giving me the word, and, and comfortable, familiar within the subconscious mind, the more and more you're going to be allowing these things that have already been arrived to finally be received and embraced within you. Possibly even some guidance, some grace, some intuition, and some healing, allowing the soul contract to move into its next phase come end of, you know, end of June, July, or when it is ready to move into its next phase. I know, a lot of words there, my Pisces. It's just, it's, I, I know, it's like, not yet. <laughs> not yet. But I just, I, lo I love this card. I love that you've got this loyalty card here. It's only the three. You got two aces. Oh, it's just, 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 it's, it's a lovely, lovely read. It's just not what you want right now. But I could feel the vibe. Can you feel the vibe on this, my Pisces, that this is going to work itself out, but you're still transforming your tragedy. And remember, the transformation card in the tarot is the death card. 
in this deck, the Phoenix. So you might be somewhere, uh, I feel like, particularly with this Fool card behind you, you've already fallen to ashes. You might still be learning how to rise from them so the two of you can meet clean and ash-free, as it were. So, may the Piscean Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus signs be blessed with all that they need in their happy, healthy, wealthy, wise, intimate, romantic, sexual, soulmate contracts for June, July 2020, that they may heal, that they may grow, that they may retreat, get some rest, and transform the tragedy they need to, to fulfill their role in this soulmate contract, to bless this soulmate contract, that it fulfills its role in the divine plan for their well-being and for the well-being of all. So mote it be. <laughs> and so it is. I love you so much, my Murr family. Murr. Please do like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and comment below if you're feeling it otherwise. Wishing you the very best and the very blessed. Ah, even if you do comment, I'm wishing you the very best and the very blessed of the rest of June, July, and uh, the rest of summer. But I will be back. You will hear from me again. But for now, hail. <laughs> Farewell, and blessed, blessed be.